So now we proceed to the setup. So what do we do to set up the integral? Well, at this point we assume parameter is going to be t. So the variable for integration is t. And it changes within that given interval. Now what do we do? Well, we take that path and we subdivide it into pieces. Well, technically we subdivide the time, not the path. So the time exists somewhere on the side. So the timeline and the time changes between A and B. And what we do is we subdivide that time interval into several pieces of the same length delta t. And then that subdivision produces subdivision of this path. And of course this subdivision of the path may not be into equal pieces because the speed can change. Right? The particle can move slow here and quickly there. But as we assume the delta t goes to zero, all those intervals will be shorter and shorter. Okay, and then what is it that we do? We look at some interval here. Let's say fix the time beginning with, oops, it's not x, it's t. ti. ti and the next is ti plus one. So we look at one interval there, and that point is f of ti, and that is f of ti plus 1. And then we have to estimate the work done by a field of forces, and I'm not going to draw that field of forces because it will put a lot of vectors in the picture, but we assume there are forces acting and that field of forces acts on the particle during this motion, short motion. And we have to estimate the work on that motion. So the total work is the sum of all those works during those short periods. And now the important work for us is to figure out the formula for the work. So how to compute the work done by forces on a particle that moves. And how is this question related to what just what, what we just did? Well, you see, we used additivity to get the subdivision and to claim that the total work is sum of all those little works. Right? So what we are talking now about is local situation. Right? We localize over a small period of time short motion, and we expect some differentiability. We expect linear dependence so that the formulas progress into an integral formula. So, we have to make some assumptions here. So what are the assumptions? We assume now that the motion is not along this curved path. It is along the straight path. And there are two ways to linearize. One way to linearize is geometrically, just saying that we move, we move from that endpoint to this endpoint. Right? But since we are in physics context, we probably want to linearize from physics point of view. How will that go? Will the physicist replace 
this motion with the motion from the endpoint to the endpoint, what would the physicist do? Find the velocity and say it's a constant velocity motion. So there is velocity at this initial point. Right, so V of Ti. And the physicist would say, now the motion is not curved, it is straight along this vector. And it happens during the time delta T. So geometrically, it doesn't even make much sense. Because we are replacing this motion with a motion along this path. Maybe that long. And of course, if you put those pieces together, those pieces don't even make those approximations. Don't even make a path altogether. All right, so geometrically, it doesn't make much sense. But the physicist naturally thinks about replacing that motion with constant velocity motion. So, we have constant velocity motion. And that velocity is V of Ti. During time delta t. Okay, so that's a part of the assumption. What else? Well, we have to assume something simple about the field of force. They're also constant. Constant, right? So what what is the constant? Well, the simplest way is to assume the well, all the forces are like this one, like the one acting on this point. Uh, doesn't have to be perpendicular. Okay, let's take it this way. So this is F at this point. Right. F evaluated at the position F of Ti. So we assume now that this constant force is acting during the whole motion. So we have constant force F of, F of Ti. So under those assumptions, 